Welcome to the Webcast Event Supply Chain Predictive Analytics Part 2. In Part 1, we talked about how predictive analytics can work on the supply side of the supply chain. In Part 2, we'll take a look at the predictive analytics for sales and operations planning, order planning, and the financial impact that your supply chain plan can have on your enterprise. The first area that we want to look at is the analytics around sales and operations planning. The analytics for sales and operations planning can cover the entire supply chain from demand all the way back through suppliers. Let's take a look at the different measures that we have in each area of the supply chain. First, on the right, we have the demand side. Demand is very traditional in terms of the analytics there. deals with forecasts, actual orders to date, forecast accuracy, and things like that. These are the kinds of measures that you typically find in your demand planning process. At the bottom on the right, you see inventory planning analytics. There you'll be dealing with the types of measures in which you're setting safety stock, taking a look at your lot sizing and the impact that has on your supply chain, what your expected service level targets are going to be, what your target inventory is supposed to be, and your actual service levels over time. These help you determine whether or not you're hitting your target inventory levels and service level targets. In the middle of the chart is the production and distribution parts of the analytics. This is what's helping you determine how much supply you expect to get and whether or not you'll distribute appropriately to your plan. So there we want to break it out and have production by process. This helps you determine whether or not you're making exactly what you thought you'd make when you put together your sales and operations plan. You have your distribution plan by mode, whether it be, say, rail, sea, or air. You want to be able to measure how well you're doing to that plan. You also want to be able to measure the actual production and distribution against your plan. So as you look historically, you'd be able to see whether or not you tend to hit your plan or you're off on your plan, and that'll help you with your safety stock and inventory targets. And the last piece there in the production and distribution area is the conformance to plan. You want to know whether or not uh, when you put out a plan, whether the uh, manufacturing operations is hitting the plan. This is very, very important in terms of understanding, A, if your plan is uh, a good one, and B, whether or not you'll be able to reliably hit your, um, your, your, your targets in terms of supply. Uh, that measure is in turn used for the safety stock calculation when you're trying to determine how much safety stock uh, you want to have. And uh, in order to do this calculation, you need to know how much um, uh, uncertainty there is on the supply side. At the bottom of the chart is the analytics around the resource. You want to know how much capacity you have available, how much capacity has been used, uh, capacity utilization and actual utilization. This does two things. Going out into the future, it'll help you determine uh, whether or not you're making good use of your resources, which resources are available, uh, what level you expect to run your resources so you get an agreement in terms of uh, the exact uh, capacity plan throughout the organization. The actual utilization, again, tells you whether or not you're hitting these predictions, and you can look into the past comparing the plan to the actual. All the way on the left are all the analytics on purchased materials. There you want to record what your expected purchases are by vendor so that you can break that out and see how each vendor is doing. You can communicate to them on uh, what you expect to buy from the vendor. You want to be able to see what the actual purchases are and do a conformance to plan both on the actual purchases and the uh, delivery to see whether or not your vendors are hitting your uh, plan. And finally on the top is what we call the analytics for the combined SNOP plan. There you can bring together all the different areas of the analytics to a combined SNOP view as well as the analytics on that view. So you can bring together purchased materials, production and distribution, uh, demand, your expected inventory levels, and your actual levels into one view. So this is all the different measures that help you during SNOP planning. The SNOP metrics that we just looked at 
gives you a chance to see the balance between supply and demand and understand what your capital equipment utilization will be and what your investment and in working capital will be. When you take a look at the order metrics, what we want to be able to understand is how well you're doing executing to the sales orders that arrive. So let's take a look at the analytic measures that we'd want to have for the order metrics. We'll start with the customer again, as we did with S&OP planning. First, there's the uh, sales orders. We want to be able to collect first commit dates so that we understand what the customer was asking for in terms of the delivery of, of the order. We want to understand what the current commit dates is so we can do the analysis whether or not we're hitting the commit dates that the customer has asked for. We want to be able to take a look at fill rates and on-time performance to be able to understand for which products are we performing well, for which customers are we performing well, and do the all-round analysis in terms of how we're meeting our customers' orders. On the inventory side, we want to take a look at on-hand inventory, maybe getting down to individual lot characteristics if that's important to delivering to your customer. We want to be able to understand if there's lots of obsolete inventory, we want to be able to measure that, clean that out if it gets to be too big. And you also want to understand aged inventory that may not necessarily be obsolete, but you need to be able to move quickly so that it doesn't become obsolete. So these are the kinds of analytics that you want to do on the inventory side. On the production and distribution side, we move from a balance of monthly or maybe weekly production at the SNOP level down to the detailed on um, what we're doing on each individual work order. So we want to look at production compliance. Are we uh, hitting the work orders that we put out in the shop? Are we completing these work orders on time? Are we sh making shipments if we're talking about distribution on time? So we're looking at each individual order, identifying the date that it was uh, committed to, the quantity that it was committed to, and measuring both date and quantity compliance on each individual work order. On the resources, we want to get down to the details of operation cycle times and utilization by operation. Instead of just taking a look at overall utilization and available capacity, uh, here we can take a look at individual cycle times, efficiencies, in order to be able to determine whether or not a resource is doing okay in terms of efficiency or whether or not we need to fine-tune the resource uh, because of some degrading uh, metrics. On the purchased material side, again, we're looking at individual orders rather than how much in a given period we're looking for for a commitment from a, uh, a vendor. So we're looking at individual planned and firm uh, purchase orders. We want to have the date and the quantity on those orders and whether or not they're being delivered on time, uh, whether they're being delivered complete, and whether or not we have to do any returns on the orders. So in the same way that we measure the sales order side and whether or not we're treating our customers well, we want to see whether the suppliers are, are doing well in terms of meeting the individual deliveries uh, that we're uh, asking for. At the management level, we bring these together uh, from all the different areas. So some of the key reports that management wants to look at is customer satisfaction reports, inventory obsolescence reports, and supplier performance. O only when you get down to the order uh, level do you really understand whether or not you're satisfying uh, customers. The final key area that we want to look at is the financial metrics that fall out of the supply chain. Although we're not doing a formal income statement and balance sheet, we want to look at the key pieces that go into that. So we'll look at each of the areas same way as we did before, starting with the demand side. On the demand side, we can get expected revenue, the actual revenue, and any performance penalties that were incurred due to late orders or short orders and things like that. Once we have the SNOP plan and the order plan in place, these measures can come out of the uh, plan just by introducing the individual revenue from a particular type of product to a particular customer. On the inventory side, we want to look at working capital targets, so the aggregate target that we have for our uh, working capital. We want to understand whether or not the plan 
we'll be meeting those working capital targets. If not, we want to be able to look at where do we have to reduce inventory in order to be able to hit the working capital targets. Uh, all these types of things we want to be able to measure and view and see how we're doing in terms of the expectation of hitting the financial plan based on the supply chain plan. Uh, also included in there is the storage costs so that we know whether or not we're incurring um, excessive storage costs due to high inventory levels and things like that. On the production and distribution side, we'd look at production costs. We want to be able to do that by individual process because the a given product can be made in multiple different ways. Uh, there's different costs in terms of making a product in different ways. So we want to be able to get down to the level of detail to get a good prediction of what our production costs will be by having the production broken out by process and the costing broken out by process. The same is true for distribution costs. We want to be able to understand what our expected mode of transportation will be as well as uh, where the sourcing will come from. O only by getting to that level of detail will we have accurate costs on the production and distribution side. On the resource side, we can take a look at applying to our expected uh, usage of resources, what the resource costs would be. Uh, we can also take a look at any expected investment as we have to add capacity into the future. So the combination of these two things would be able to give uh, management their uh, overhead due to resources as well as the variable costs. On the material side, we want to look at purchasing costs. Uh, we want to be able to do that by vendor. As we said before, we want to break out the supply chain plan, not just total amount for a given product, but how much are we going to get from individual vendors when we have uh, sourcing choices. We also want to look at supplies as they come in and track them as, as they're being stored to see whether or not the uh, firm purchases that we have or even things that have already arrived, supplies that have already arrived, whether or not they'll go obsolete. And we want to be able to understand those costs. If we bring all this together, as I said at the introduction, we won't necessarily come up with a formal income and balance statement but we have all the fundamental building pieces that would go into an estimate by finance in terms of being able to put together a very accurate picture of what the profit and loss statement will look like. Okay, so you're thinking, this sounds very exciting. How do I get started? Well, the best way to get started is just by doing. So the first thing that I would recommend is that you start with uh, some benchmarking to understand where you are today and identify opportunities for supply chain and process improvements. You don't need to go back and collect old data necessarily. What you can do is just start recording your plan and then uh, start measuring your actuals against the plan. You can build up your history over time and little by little you'll start to have the metrics in place that you can use in order to improve your supply chain. It would be really good to interview the key people who are responsible for the various business uh, processes so that you can find out what are the strengths and the weaknesses of the process. Uh, you want to be able to use this information in order to determine exactly what areas should you measure and in terms of what level of detail for doing those measurements. I, I talked about different levels of detail, whether at the SNOP level or the order level that you can use for measuring the supply chain. And only by going through a process of improvement and interviews with people to understand where the problems of the enterprise lies uh, will you come up with the best strategy in terms of how to implement uh, uh, the supply chain an analytics. Uh, make sure you collect the key data to calculate the, the performance and, and track KPI, KPIs. You have to determine for the goals that you set up which are the most important KPIs to collect and, and show. Uh, there's many, many uh, performance uh, analytic measures that are uh, in a, a standard system, and you won't be able to utilize every single one of them. So it's very important to decide which ones are the most important to you. And then uh, after you collect the analytics, you can identify small projects in order to improve the supply chain, such as inventory optimization. If you're having a lot of problems with excess inventory, 
uh, network optimization, if your supply chain costs for both production and distribution are high. And by picking through the analytics and, and measuring where you're really off from your targets, you'll be able to decide which projects will give you the best uh, return on investment. A map such as the Fast Break Benchmarking Plan shown here can help you get started. In terms of the interviewing process, if you break out by area what your major processes are, and then talk about the process owner and set up a certain amount of time to talk to them, this is the best way to get started. You can see as an example just to see how this would work on the supply chain planning side. You have your major processes of demand forecasting, forecast methodology, sales and operations planning financial uh, performance planning, market forecasting, order execution, and returns, and your process owner on the right. If you go through and do an interview in terms of how they're running their process, what they need to measure, you can put together uh, uh, the, uh, the fast benchmarking. You can see here for each of the other areas, we've got supply demand alignment, uh, inventory management, and uh, the process of collecting uh, history here. Uh, go through that and interview the process uh, owners. It is pretty easy to get started with uh, the performance uh, management and, and analytic benchmarking. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of effort. If you put in place, uh, you can get some uh, systems that have uh, canned uh, analytics that you just need to feed in from your planning system and your system of record. It's pretty easy to get going. That's it for today's small webinar. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want some more information, feel, feel free to visit uh, www.adexa.com. Uh, my name is William Green. At, uh, you can reach me at wgreen at adexa.com. Send any questions that you have to me about this or any other supply chain topics that you'd like to talk about. Uh, you can always see what events we have planned at events at adexa.com. Thank you for being with us today.